good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are joining us from hi welcome my name is abhijit bhaduri and i'm going to be your host for today's conversation with a really interesting person and a very interesting subject and i can pretty much assure you chances are that you have not heard of that technology because it's a very interesting sector uh, that we are going to bring you examples from today Dreamers and Unicorns in season three has been focused entirely on uh, well-being. And in that, we often talk about four dimensions, which is mind, body, heart, and soul. Mind is about, you know, your intellectual curiosity. It's about uh, the kind of psychological safety that you feel, uh, you know, in terms of uh, your physical wellness, uh, the, the kind of food that you eat, the exercise, etc. So that's the body part of it. Heart comes from, uh, your well-being comes from the relationships that you build. And of course, soul is all about the purpose that guides you throughout your life. So these are the four elements that really we get to talk to with each of our incredible guests that we have been following. And thank you so much for joining us. And therefore, um, all I want to say is today's uh, guest um, comes from a sector, which is, um, you know, how should I say you've heard of fintech, which is about technology that guides financial services. You've heard of edtech, health tech, et cetera, et cetera. But guaranteed, you've never heard of real tech. And that's what we are going to talk about today. So don't go anywhere. Grab a seat. We are just getting started. <music> Hi there. Um, so, um, Mrinad, welcome. And I can uh, just bring up my guest, Sajid. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And uh, Sajid, uh, I'd like to sort of uh, introduce you. But um, I always think that besides, of course, saying that you are the vice president HR for WebTech Corporation, um, what else can I say about you that people don't know? So why don't you introduce yourself? And let me say hello to all the um, uh, viewers who have joined in, thank you so much. If you have your questions, do add them. But Sajid, welcome to the show. Sure. Thanks, Abhijit. So team, uh, look, I'll try to give you my introduction by saying that in one line that I'm a HR pr practitioner. So I've uh, spent uh, almost like 23 to 24 years in multiple sectors. And the good part is I've seen uh, com uh, these companies that I've worked with Go, go through growth and at times it has gone through restructuring, reorganization and then uh, finally last uh, six years has been an incredible journey for me to be part of a pretty large project we are doing with Indian Railways on setting up three factories in three corners of India, literally remote sites and I think that's uh, what defines me today in terms of my experience as a core member of the business uh, to do this uh, pretty large project uh, which is we are part of VAP, VAP Tech Corporation now. It's a rail technology company, as Abhijit was mentioning. In simple, rail we build. Uh, yes, so that's really the introduction, Abhijit. Thank you so much, um, uh, Sajid. You know, it's always incredible to learn about uh, people's career choices, and you know, did you always want to be in HR? What What was your uh, ambition when you were growing up? Sure. So look, I very, very openly, I didn't have a, I would say, have an inkling about human resources management. At that point of time, when I was doing my post-graduation, I wanted to do a, a master's of business, business administration. Actually, the interest of HR led by my own uncle, who was HR pra practitioner, and uh, he was about 10 to 12 years senior. So I had someone in the family, Abhijit, that led me to this field. And I will just tell you, I think having a strong social connect and network uh, is, uh, is helps people in the early career. And as I grew in the career, in my professional career, I have a personal liking for human resources as a subject as well. Why, why is that? I think the big part is it's human beings are complex people. 
uh, one uh, normally you see it, you cannot look a mathematical <laughs> formula to retain someone to grow someone there's each person has a story and abhijit if i ask you your career story and what decisions you take would be different than mine and sure. that really is the interesting part and i i do feel that in the early stage of uh, hr career you don't realize it but as you grow uh, in in this field you realize the in i would say many many different kind of challenges of this field right and that's the reason you have specialization as well within hr of people take up taking up industrial relations comp and ben or is being an hr generalist hmm is it a better idea to be a generalist or a specialist what what would you say okay i would say the best people hr uh, colleagues i have had uh, are people who have changed tracks and i've had the flavor of both both sides i had uh, i was my personal story is i've been in hr generalist throughout except for last maybe two or three years where i had a deep dive on the merger and acquisition side side of uh, which is a specialization so to answer your question abhijit the best is uh, to go both sides and then grow and a lot of people you would see who would do that i certainly did that i started off as a generalist then did a stint as a specialist in uh, in you know ir as it was uh, called then came back to being a generalist actually then did a stint as a uh, specialist in learning and development etc so i've sort of really moved um and then even as a generalist to be able to move between different geographies that was a great learning for me and i had uh, never worked initially outside of uh, uh, india and it gave me a great chance to learn about different countries hr out there etc so you are right that you know the more kind of variety it's a bit like you know the central premise of hr as you said is we are like everybody else in some respects and we are you know we have some similarity with others in some respects and then there are some respects we have which is we are completely unique so i think discovering that pattern about people um is really a lifetime process i certainly uh, have been fascinated the more uh, you know when you meet people you discover how much there is to know about each one so yeah you are right that uh, so what was um, uh, you know what what's been um, one of the setbacks that would have you know did you ever face that kind of a scenario where uh, sometimes you know when in the early stages of one's career people don't necessarily experience uh, you know success is great but when they experience failure for the first time uh, you know a lot of times uh, it leads to self doubt that did i choose the right profession am i in the right place yeah. uh, should i have done something else um you know so did you experience a, any of that and if so how do you deal with it sure so i would say yes absolutely i did face uh, pretty early in my career and i'll i'll give you the something to, to which i learned from it and i want to share so my first job that i had was uh, with a very large indian company larson and tubro and i realized that uh, my own uh, it's a very specialist role that i was doing of rotating it was called a job rotation program and i re- i wanted to basically look at an option where i can grow uh, horizontally in hr uh, i was given an option of uh, moving to nasik from bombay Uh, mm-hmm. it was a new plant that was coming up and uh, it this i would use it as more of reflection of not taking the right decision i didn't take up that role i wanted to be in a bigger city i if i would have taken that role uh, if you're in a, a new site it is coming up you really learn about business not just about hr and you would get involved into labor and employment to Uh, construction to project management everything and i think those skills are something that uh, one should learn pick up very early and therefore as we have remote sites in our fact in our company i really uh, suggest to my fellow colleagues that take up assignments which are remote don't uh, bigger city the shine of bigger city you can get later as well in life 
so if i would have done that uh, abhijit i would have grown from a skill perspective much faster uh, not just about career, uh, hierarchy level i'm talking about skill level to know the business of uh, of uh, this the company that you work for so that's my strong very strong recommendation for people who are watching this i i i would sort of uh, then say that i think the point that you make is that when you um, you know take up a, a a challenge in the early stages of your career uh, what i hear you say is that when you move to this you know new site where things are coming up you not only know about um, you know this kind of it's boundaryless in terms of the way that you operate you are doing some of uh, your contracts you are looking at yeah. labor management you are looking at uh, building career paths etc yeah. all of that you are doing but you are also learning about project management the financial elements so uh, at the early stage you know it is in some sense when you work in some of the smaller sites uh, you get a fairly comprehensive view of uh, you know the business and hr and different elements of it so in some sense you get if i were to compare um, you know your career journey at the beginning i would say it's really like a buffet you have to get a view of everything which is available and then only take a look at uh, what you want to specialize and go back for second helpings etc so yeah that makes a lot of sense uh, thanks sajid um, we are talking to sajid ekbal the vice president hr of webtech corporation it is a rail tech corporation i should say the, the technology of railways um, you know i grew up um, in as, as my father was in the railway so i grew up in the railway colony so when you talk about rail tech it's something that suddenly resonates a lot with me as well uh, so sajid what what uh, when you started to do your work you went through different corporations um yeah. when you joined a new company yeah what are some of the things that uh, people can do to understand the cultural nuances of each workplace because they are yeah. different you know every company is different what works in one place what is appreciated in one place often doesn't uh, get appreciated elsewhere so in that sense when people uh, join a new corporation yeah they often make mistakes so what are some of the things that you would advise people to look for when they join a corporation and what would they you know look out for sure so i have two things to talk about the first one is i think the the important part is uh, some of the functions which are outside the own function you belong to uh, having conversations with uh, either uh, the manager or the senior leader in that function i'll give an example i personally feel that uh, to understand business or finance uh, having uh, connects and maybe friendship to some of the colleagues in finance or if the is the company is in, into operations maybe supply chain so initial one month uh, it's extremely extremely important to have a wider network of people to not just know them uh, by their name and what they do but to understand what value does that function has in the value chain of the entire organization let me give an example on this to drive the point so if it is a a company which is in in uh, healthcare right so there is there is a angle to uh, the fact that the customer uh, piece becomes very critical so i used to work for g healthcare uh, which is also called wipro g so how understanding what are the customer facing roles how service is critical for the quality of the product because that's from where the information flow flows in so i i feel that bef- before we spend too much time in our own area of work understanding the top maybe the key uh, a department function whatever name we give and having a connect with them to understand how does the flow of business works is very very critical and the second part is i do feel that uh, people value Uh, mm-hmm. the subject matter expertise we bring in and uh, i do feel that uh, working maybe if, if it's a 90 day plan to really plan what, where will i add value in in terms of team that i belong to 
and finally a small uh, tip is understanding what are the top 3 or 4 agenda of your manager of what are the things that are pain points or something is driving uh, in the initial 3 months will put uh, the person in really really strong uh, footing to, uh, to make and mark i think just not job description yeah, the goals of the person but the goals of the manager is equally important to know abhijit so uh, sajid my uh, take away you know i would say is one you are talking about the importance of understanding um, uh, the financial element of the business you know effectively how does it make money what yeah. you know how does it um, um, add value to the consumer or customer as the case might be and actually then also looking at it from a closer point of, because when you look at the financial element of the business you get a overview of the business so you understand yeah. where your role fits in into that overall scheme of things so uh, if i were to draw a parallel i would say that uh, understand read the entire play if you are going to be on uh, yeah. you know perform a role in a play first read the entire play you understand is it a tragedy comedy there is that social setting what time period what kind of characters yeah. how many characters then you read your portions a little deeper and uh, from there you know you are talking about the fact that you need to be able to um, uh, understand the goals of your manager which makes it very powerful for you to succeed so um, that's great advice uh, sajid uh, and you know as the viewers uh, you know just to recap for all the viewers we are talking to um, sajid ikbal who's the vp hr for webtech corporation and we are going to talk about wellness in the workplace but uh, one of the important elements of wellness is to be able to settle down in your career you know when you take a role at whichever stage not just you know in the early stages of your career even today if you were to join a corporation these are useful things to uh, keep in mind so um, you know i think um, you know we have ls murthy who says that understanding the value chain and connecting with the people side i would sort of agree with that um i wanted to uh, switch tracks uh and talk about uh, you know wellness <clears throat> as we are sort of looking at your career journey um wellness uh, you um, does it change that does the definition change um according to the industry or are the elements of wellness pretty universal what is your belief what have so, you seen so yeah so abhijit uh, i i was doing some reading uh, and one of the recent research by tuft university which covers about 19000 uh, employers uh, most of them are, would be in north america is about that it uh, it actually has uh, impact across all industries uh, some industries uh, the impact is more quantifiable and i'll give an example for that in a, in a company which has manufacturing uh, the safety uh, issues it could be a, a safety injury because of the sure. fatigue is very uh, most of the companies have an alert system which gives about that a particular factory let's say there are 30 factories one of them we have multiple injuries happening so there's an alert mechanism but think about uh, a industry which is uh, like you're talking in the beginning of fintech or a industry which is uh, uh, business outsourcing or it where the alerts of an injury uh, is not really in a physical space right because the nature of work is not that uh, you you have a ehs as a big big uh, factor at a at a factory so in summary abhijit i feel very strongly it is everywhere in some industry it bubbles up in some industry you we don't see it it's an iceberg which mm. you don't see it and i think the important part is because of last two years situation on covid there's a lot of research that's happening in this area and that research is is coming up uh, much more than what we have seen in the past abhi yeah i would say that um, you know if um, 2020 was really the challenge of the pandemic which was you know it just 
took over our lives, caught everybody by surprise the world over. Uh, I also think that 2021, in some sense, um, we are sort of looking at this almost two years of isolation and the uh, you know well-being challenges that have come in, you know, in terms of all the four elements, uh, mental, physical, uh, spiritual, uh, and relationship-oriented um, elements of it. So I'd like to really uh, talk to you about these uh, four elements. You spoke about the first one, which is, you know, looking at the um, elements of safety, fatigue, uh, you know, which is the physical element of it, physical well-being. Um, in white collar jobs, uh, you don't necessarily notice the fatigue, uh, you know, because you are sort of really stuck at the desk, you're typing away. But those long hours actually do make a difference. Uh, you know, when you see that in the um, factories and manufacturing, and, and the reason why I'm sort of stressing on that is we haven't really had a guest who's spoken at length about the manufacturing uh, environment. I would love to learn more about that, what you are doing. Um, so tell me about, uh, you know, what do you see happening uh, with uh, the well-being element in the manufacturing sector? Walk me through some of that. Sure. So, I'll, so uh, just to, for the viewers, uh, we actually have, our company has about five factories and uh, uh, it's, we manufacture locomotives or parts that go into a metro pro project. So these are pretty intensive testing happens, right? So I'm just trying to give the lay of the yeah. land here. Some interesting uh, statistics I'll share with you is we have a, a employee assistance program partner and uh, one thing we have realized looking at the number of calls coming up. So we do have a technology center and then we have uh, these manufacturing sites. The number of calls reaching out for help is very, very low uh, from our, our colleagues in the factory setting, right? Hmm. So I was having a dialogue and we talked a little more in, with, with our partner and the partner said, this is something common we are seeing just not in your organization, but we see that across manufacturing. So there are two things that come out, Abhijit, uh, which is an action for, for all of us is one is the awareness level of even asking for help. We can mm. coin it as counseling help, but asking of help could also be to the manager, to a peer. It doesn't mean to be to a a call center of the partner company that normally we have. So that awareness is very low. The second uh, piece uh, is even if the awareness is there, this there is an inhibition. And I'll use a, uh, a Hindi word, jijakna, right? Mm. So mm. there is this piece of not opening up. And mm. it is not an easy thing that uh, an email or someone standing up as a plant head could just say that, hey, please reach out to this number. What, uh, what we are trying to do is that in a smaller setting, uh, we are trying to do in 15, 20 people is to have conversations on, on topics which uh, we, it could be two angles to it. One could be the wellness angle. And, this, and the other thing is we have named it as speak up. It could also be stress being driven by the culture inside the organization. Mm. Right. Uh, and for both, uh, we are having smaller conversation, group conversations, Abhijit. And I do feel that that has much bigger impact than all the email or WhatsApp, which we can say it's a tick mark that we have communicated. So net, net, uh, Abhijit, if I have to summarize, low awareness in manufacturing setup. And also there's, a, there's an in the inhibition, uh, maybe because of the fact that people come from environments, even previous companies where this is not something up in front uh, that we do. So th that's really two key points that I wanted to highlight, Abhijit. Um, thank you. And, and you know, I think, Sajid, you raise a very interesting element. Uh, and for the viewers, we are talking about wellness in the workplace, and we have a great partnership with Mana Wellness. And, um, you know, I wanted to really use this particular season, season three, to bring all the guests who are doing exemplary work in the field of uh, uh, well-being. And one of the things that uh, caught my attention in terms of what you are doing 
is that uh, building that element of psychological safety, which I think matters so much. Uh, you know, psychological safety is the comfort that I can uh, walk up to you. And whether it is to say that I'm feeling extremely stressed and I'm not feeling good about whatever, or to even disagree with a point of view or to suggest something. And, and I love the phrase that you used, jajakna. You know, it's just that, yes, the literal translation is hesitation, but uh, I think jajakna also has the element of um, there's an element of shame, potential fear of that shame that, you know, what would you think of me if I did say what I had on my mind? You know, so I think that really makes an enormous difference for people to be able to have that comfort. What are some of the things that you see people doing actively to build that sense of comfort in the team members? What do you think, um, uh, you know, people sure. do? Sure. So I, I feel that if you look at one of the most important uh, role in an organization setup mm. is the role of the immediate manager. Mm -hmm. And whether we call it frontline managers or if you are in an IT company, you can just, I think most of the time it's called manager. I think that that uh, role is extremely, extremely uh powerful because it's really a front line of the information coming in first. So we actually, what we, we have seen is that if that set of population is, is provided information, which can be used in either informal or formal setting of communication to the team. Uh, and I tell you the most powerful thing, if you are listening to today's conversation, you are in any role is to provide, give your own example. Uh, of uh, that you have used some, maybe ask for help or reached out to your manager or peer because that gives a very strong message that it's just not uh, passing on a communication coming from senior leadership team. It's as a manager or a colleague, you personally have, have done it. So I, Abhijit, I'll make it very simple. I feel the role that we have of, uh, of the frontline managers is a very, very key part. And we try to look at that uh, population as our uh, target population to do those conversations one-on-one -on -one or in, in smaller groups. And look, that in India, because you. of the SME, sorry, now, go ahead. Uh, let me ask that question. Apologies, I interrupted you. Um, I wanted to know, you know, you, you said that... Um, People hesitate to bring it up with their managers, etc. Um, has it ever happened to you that uh, you know you hesitated to bring up a challenge that you were facing? And you yes, know, how did you get over I'll that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll share. So I was actually uh, for about four to five years. I was in US, and I was I had a situation my that my spouse was doing her uh, management program. And therefore, I had a situation where I had to basically pick up really small in my kids were two and four years. And because she had to go to university, I had to step out pretty early uh, from, from office. Hmm. And uh, my hesitation, uh, I was feeling that because I'm, I have to leave it around, let's say, by 3 p.m. to pick them up and then bring them to, to our house, uh, there was this piece that I'm not around after a specific time. And I was feeling that that's, that is something my manager is not openly, openly speaking to me, that uh, he's, uh, he feels that. So this was linked with, uh, and it happens to a lot, a lot of us, it was linked to performance. But the mm -hmm. reality is uh, one can, today, if you look, this is about 15 years ago. If you talk about today, Abhijit, things are much more, better of um, the fact that you can explain your situation. So my learning is it is absolutely important to be vulnerable and explain the situation that you're going through. Whether it is a medical situation, uh, there could be a personal medical situation as well, or supporting a family member on something which would, of course, have an end date. It's not like... Uh, yes, it's so that's that's something that uh, I had as a hesitation, Abhijit. And, and um, you know, uh, when you look at this hesitation, uh, it comes, you are right, that, you know, there is this whole 
thing that you initially think it is so minor that I don't know it's whether it's even worth bringing yeah. up. And then at some point of time, it's so large that you kind of think that now there is no point bringing it up because, you know, the challenge is just way too large. Um, so, you know, when it's really all consuming, what are some of the things that you would advise people can do to uh, bring up those issues? How do you think? Sure. Sure, absolutely. So for the first the first thing is I feel that uh, I'll use simple words, uh, suggestions like have a con if you're new in the organization, have a conversation with a peer first to understand that is this something that you are uh, you have in your mind? Is it something that is okay to bring up? It's a brand new in the organization. But if you have been in an organization, I, f I personally feel having a one-on-one -on -one dialogue, like you were saying, Abhijit, to open up the topic is an important one. And the way to look at it is, what's the worst it can happen? There are more upsides than downside when one opens up. Uh, and we're talking about here, just not uh, about uh, stress role related or you're taking off. Uh, Abhijit, like you pointed out, uh, we're talking about all four elements here. Correct, mm -hmm. which uh, which defines overall well-being. So, so the that's mind, what body, is heart, and soul. To... Yes, go ahead, please. No, no, mind, yes. body, heart, and soul. Just so I'm just recapping for those of us who joined it maybe a little late. So, um, uh, you know, so these four elements all become important. And yes. as you were mentioning, that it's important to build the sense of comfort with your manager. Where um, maybe if I were to rephrase what you just said uh, I think what I heard you say is you build the sense of comfort little by little so you can progressively uh, keep the person online about what's happening with you uh, every single day in your life you know so some sense uh, I wanted to actually say that what if you find the manager intimidating or not very open to that how do you get over that barrier that's what I wanted yeah. to know about yeah sure so look I feel that one uh, one thing that uh, we have implemented uh, in in the company it, and my GE and now Vaptech, both companies have, is uh, we call it uh, 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 three roles that you can go to when you have concerns and we brand it as speak up. Hmm. So if you're not, if your manager is intimidating, there is uh, the HR manager to reach out. And I also talk to you when I say HR manager, it is in the role of an HR manager that he or she, uh, when it, I have seen most people taking it very seriously uh, as that this is by part of my job to do that. So that's the second part. The third is, uh, is the one over one manager. And we also have seen a fourth one, which some companies have it, is the compliance or legal counsel. And these are neutral roles, I will call it, right? Because when I say neutral roles, manager and man one over one manager, Abhijit is a, is a hierarchy that you belong to. But these neutral roles, whether it is HR, legal, and co compliance, these are the people or roles one can seek. Sometimes these are roles of formalized in companies where you mm -hmm. can go and uh, talk about your concern. So let me also explain to you, just going and talking to HR manager, HR manager could give a tact of how you bring up this topic. And he may say, this is serious enough that uh, you have to actually go to your one over one manager for it. And 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 Abhijit, we should, we should not, uh, I think we, this part of intimidated manager is a real thing in all companies, right? It will be in mine as well. But I think... Uh, Going to these uh, filler roles related to speak up has helped us, uh, Abhijit. Uh, what we do, I'll tell you, one more thing is we try to see once in uh, once in a month at key sites. And then we have something called compliance review board once in a quarter, where the head of the region, along with all the uh, HR leaders, along with business leaders, we bring up a scorecard of how many people are reaching out to this, these avenues. Interesting part on this is a very low number is also not a good thing. 
mm. which means the culture is not great that very few people are coming up a very high number could be it's absolutely it's a good thing because we have seen high number and people are not anonymous means that you have it's a it's a litmus test for having an open culture and it could be that when you analyze it and we discuss it not by issues but just from a start perspective to be coming up from some pockets which again one has to deep dive so obviously the reason i'm giving the full process part is it is not just me saying that this is done is being done you have to run it run it as a process abhi to make it uh, impact in the organization so uh, you know uh, sajid one of the things that you said which caught my attention was that when you look at collecting that information that do you get a lot of uh, uh, you know issues from a particular department uh instead of looking at that as a challenge you are saying that a lot of people are speaking up so uh, you know and especially if it is not anonymous that's a good sign of psychological safety that people are comfortable to do that so Absolutely. this is one indicator that i think the leaders must look out for or people around can look out for but the other is uh, when uh, that was even more interesting that if there are no issues being raised uh it doesn't mean that you know everything is hunky dory it could potentially mean that there are issues which people are not comfortable raising and uh, what is the role of hr or the individual to get over those kind of challenges how do you handle that sure sure so we we had uh, in the company one process which we used to call it as session uh, d and uh, I, the reason i'm giving you because it just it comes to my mind is is that once in a year uh, all the key aspects of where potentially with with the team uh, one over one manager level used to have a conversation verbal and talk about that look these are the avenues that are there if you have issues whether it is related to wellness or it could be related to compliance as well right because right. it could be areas where we have to follow the, the process or the law and this kind of once in a year could we could see the graph of issues going up it's it's literally like a hockey stick after these kind of conversation now why if you ask number one abhi it is very important to have refresher because any organization will be ins and outs of people second it gives some message that it's not the ceo on the top who's writing an email it's actually someone i know who's bringing this up that look we as a organization would like that it's an open environment uh, and you leverage uh, avenues to bring up topics or keep it anonymous if it is a uh, for example for from a wellness perspective there are help needed on mental illness for example so these are the avenues and you can keep it con- uh, anonymous and we don't need to know but please use right mm-hmm. so uh, that one uh, broad process once in a year we have seen it work that's one second is is examples being talked without naming in a all hands perspective also makes a, a mark and i'll tell you the why these uh, when i say let me give with an example we had situations in one of our factories where uh, it's an industrial environment is not there and we had lot of uh, almost 25% women at mm. the factory shop floor mm. so what used to happen we have seen this happen at the site in the factory is that there are the women employees were raising concerns about um, comments being made which are not they are not being comfortable and we had to and also some i would say they are not let's say there someone is not feeling comfortable because of the fact that uh, someone wants to come make friendship whether the the woman employee or a male employee is not very comfortable with it right we had uh, abhi ji the interesting part is these are all 19 to 20 year olds first job first time out of college and for us uh, the big part was that at the senior leadership level at the at the factory the, 
person who was in the job as uh, my colleague shankar he was making sure that if there are issues that are coming up we bring it on in the all employee setting and talk about that hey we are seeing uh, topics being brought up uh, if anyone uh, we, we we really feel that we are happy that these concerns are being raised but it's also an opportunity for us as colleagues to have an environment which is uh, i would say a environment where people feel comfortable to come to work uh, so you're not giving out the name right but you're calling out the issue and you're doing it uh, in a setting which is uh, i would say a, a, a safety net is there when you talk about it without naming people so so abhijit i do feel these uh, thing that i'm talking about happens and i've worked in three companies most of the people watching it happens a lot in almost all companies and we see in certain age groups or certain places where it's a first job and people have not worked together maybe the number of uh, issues are higher and then it we saw it stabilizing now this factory is four year old abhijit so we do feel that uh, the first year was different versus now um and you know when you look at um, uh, your organization uh, you talked about some fabulous examples of uh, you know looking at uh, giving people psychological safety you know through the anonymity or raising the issues and that's probably my big takeaway uh, you know sajid that uh, when you see um, our own assumptions of openness we always think that if i have uh, some issue with you if i bring it up you're probably going to feel bad and so people don't do that uh, if there is a single reason that i have learned that you know it with the team members or with your colleagues or anyone uh, even in the family raising the issue and stating your current feeling is such a powerful way to build trust in the organization or the team or in that relationship so i think that's to me a big takeaway that uh, raising the issue is is actually that's one of the ways in which we make it a more inclusive place where you can say that okay that i'm not comfortable with this and it's not looked at as uh, something negative that it's a way of you know making space um the way i think about it is in many ways it's like saying that if you and i we have to share a seat yeah, yeah. if i say that hey uh, sajid you're taking up too much of the space i i am unable to sit comfortably can you make a little space for me i think it's really like that an inclusive space uh, is where both people are comfortable sitting together you know so i think that's how i look at it absolutely abhijit so when you think about um, uh, you know we've spoken about uh, mind body the heart and soul part of it we are you know um, talking about well being these are two elements of it i'd love to know of some examples um, that uh, you know you've uh, you know where where you worked on doing something which is about well being in terms of um, connecting with people etc to facilitate that or to help people find a purpose you know what are some of the things that uh, you've seen working uh, talk to us about sure. it sure right absolutely so look uh, on the heart and soul part uh, i uh, so so this is a uh, it's a very interesting uh, subject uh, Uh, reason being that uh, look uh, if you look at these two elements together some of the things like the social connect that happens uh, you, if you can you quantify it that what was our return of investment of bringing families together it's tough to quantify but i think those connects are the ones that uh, connects us to the organization we belong to or the company we belong to. and one of the best examples abhijit which a lot of us on this uh, uh, call would relate to is is the army and one of my colleagues uh, who uh, is part of uh, is a colleague of mine shared that we let's take the example of armed forces uh, there is a very very strong purpose in terms of their own existence but one of the things that uh, 
on connecting the heart is uh, think about the army person on the borders or is 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 at a remote site away from the family one of the things that army uh, that is a cantonment area you one would see consistently is that they bring the family in the middle in terms of um, whether it is, it is uh, taking care of a school at uh, availability of the school or it is about the fact that uh, god forbid something happens the family gets taken care of so if you see the underlining thing and is the fact that they are basically there is a certain message that we will take care of your family right the many things that gets done for that and imagine the the highest level of sacrifice that can happen is is really done by our soldiers and armed forces people right and if you see uh, the research on hr has most of things including assessment centers have started in in the army correct and i i related to this piece of heart that you're talking about there's a lot of things that they they do to connect the purpose and also to connect uh, with the people who are uh, who are family members so abhijit i wanted to bring that out because it will relate to a lot of lot of us on the call today i completely agree that you know uh, when people uh, sort of talk about examples of the army i think uh, a lot of people focus on the fact that it's uh, at one level an extremely hierarchical organization so it is possible to get things done because you just issue an order and it gets done actually that's a myth um and uh, you know i've spoken to several people who've uh, talked about their own example yeah. the army actually focuses a lot on connecting um people through uh, the heart you know which is that and you you're right that if you look at the cantonment area you know the people are really brought together and the um, you know the while there is hierarchy in the workplace outside of the workplace you know people do uh, sort of they share common facilities they share uh, common schools for the kids so yeah. in multiple ways they bring uh, they make an effort to bring down that hierarchy and also i think for me the m- most important piece uh, sajid is that uh, when the um, officer uh, who is really respected and trusted when that person says that tomorrow we'll go for a 30 km run yeah. the officer is working right in front he is running with the yeah. troops uh, you know and running three steps in front that is really the inspiration and most of the times when you see leaders who are not respected it's when they issue an order which they don't do themselves i think that's one of the greatest pieces um, you know i think um, that example has always inspired me to say that you know if you cannot do something better than the team uh, you have no business asking them to do it so i think that adds to a lot of credibility we have got a question uh, from uh, devashish i'm going to bring it up uh, on the screen he says that uh, how do you get the learning team and talent management team to play an integral role in uh, moving this uh, mind shift change sure so i so, so thanks devashish for bringing up an interesting part of how we are organized uh, in hr i do feel that uh, the best thing that could happen is that uh, these two i see it as a pillar uh, and then you have a a broader if, if, if hr is a function is a building these two are pillars and there are three or four more pillars so coming hr team coming together um, uh, cutting across all these aspects including talent management and then looking at the fact that in today's world uh, maybe 10 years earlier wellness was not in the center of uh, i would say in terms of both mind share and investment of dollar money right and uh, the good part is not just a hr team i think it is now coming in the picture right in the center even for senior leadership team or whether we call it with the ceo or which one name we give so i feel that if it is being driven as an as one of the five four or five agendas that the company hr team has, has to drive all these elements that you're talking about will be there now i'll be very specific to talent management because you have asked about it 
is that if you look at uh, one of the things that uh, recently we did avijit was we have actually done a job uh, job architecture first time i've gone through our job architecture process in my company which means the old levels are all gone and then as an integrated company you have new levels it comes under talent management in most companies but the impact of that today is that you are literally having employees who would be asking questions about comparison comparisons will happen am i pegged at the right right level and which means uh, abhijit from a wellness perspective is again it's going to if you look at a year's graph this is a time where where uh, i would say activating communication small group um, yeah, meetings on understanding what are they going through and it doesn't mean that okay calling up a phone number and that's the answer to it but uh, the human connective that we talk about with devashish of wherever we have seen these situations coming up by manager or manager bringing it up to hr manager or hr manager directly connecting really 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 helps on those situations so how i'm linking the wellness piece to talent management is organizations go through these changes they could be reorganization they could be merger and abhijit we have seen a lot of uh, stress when two companies merge maybe there is no action to happen but the rumor mills really go up so uh, my role will be present or not and abhijit i learned by this question by sharing a personal example i had to go and meet a doctor and i was trying to get my blood pressure normal blood pressure checked so he asked me aapka job sahi salamat hai right and his angle was that what could be the reason he is getting his blood pressure checked right he was mm-hmm. thinking what's happening in the company uh, so we underestimate sometimes the stress uh, sometimes we create more stress with the data coming yeah. in yeah. but but uh, underestimating it that this kind of big change uh, creates a lot of uh, i would say anxiety is the right word mm-hmm. and reaching out helps abhijit thanks for giving me time to explain this um so we have a comment from rajesh he said there on finding purpose in life suggest thought to hire fresh diploma graduates from government diploma colleges is making a change in families many of them are first generation uh, guys in a formal job and this makes a lot of difference some are sole breadwinners for the family and some are funding sibling studies and some are financing their own marriage expenses absolutely and i think um you know when you look at the workplace um, there are if i were to summarize today's conversation with you uh, sajid yeah. there were a couple of things that stood out for me um one i think in the in the manufacturing sector we don't very often see um uh, you know enough people talking about well being and and all kinds of elements of well being and i think that's an opportunity for us to really focus on doing that because there are so many of these large corporations which are uh, you know employing thousands and thousands of people and how many factories did you say you have sajid you mentioned it i'm missing it yeah so we have about five factories in india and where are the factories just tell me about that yeah so interestingly so we have one which is a large two large factories one is in outskirts of bangalore in hosur one we have in marhora which is uh, about 80 km from patna one it, it, we have in uh, shah jahanpur in uttar pradesh uh, we have another one in gandhi dham which is next to kandla port and the last one is uh, a factory in calcutta so when we look at india's map <laughs> literally uh, north east west south so gandhi dham shahjahanpur marhora uh, Bang- uh, hosur and calcutta yes so brilliant i also like the fact that you talked about uh, you know the element of um, uh, raising the issues in some sense making your voice heard is an important element of well being uh, you also talked about the fact that during mergers and acquisitions the rumor mills can really generate a lot of stress and so just being aware that this happens the role of the leader i think is uh, being able to have those conversations in different forums and i would just sort of add that you know having the conversation uh, one to many which is a you know town hall kind of a format 
or within your department, so relatively smaller chunk of that, and above all, in the one-to-one -one settings. I think doing it well in all three kinds of settings is a very important element of uh, you know, being able to build wellness uh, in the workplace. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you very much, Sajid, for talking about your own personal experiences as well. And there were lovely examples which you said about the hesitation that you had in the early stages of your career. Very powerful examples and insights. Um, I want to say thanks on behalf of, uh, of course, uh, you know, all our viewers and listeners. Thank you so much for being here, for all the questions and comments, because this is really what uh, makes it a two-way conversation. Um, every Thursday, as we are talking about this, uh, I also want to acknowledge the role of Mana Wellness uh, for being a partner and uh, sort of bringing these issues to light, because I think there isn't enough conversation that happens uh, in some of these uh, aspects, you know, when you think about um, what can we do to build that awareness, uh, you know, in people about well-being and all four aspects, mind, body, heart and soul. So thanks a lot once again. And we are coming up to the end of the year. Um, so I want to wish you, our viewers, the very best for 2022. And thank you so much for joining us. And it's just absolutely incredible uh, to be able to uh, have you as a guest and see you again soon.